Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What's the hardest thing you've ever had to say no to? My old boss in response to an offer to come back to the job I had left a month prior. I really liked that job and I liked the industry. I was also getting ready to start a new, much cooler, role in the company. My wife didn't like the area we lived in, I wasn't a huge fan of it either, and wanted to move somewhere else. I ended up finding a job closer to her hometown and we moved there. I absolutely hate this job. I hate the area. Moving also meant giving up on a house that we bought as an investment. That was three months ago. I still get messages from my old boss and a few of the other managers at the old plant telling me that the door is open if I wanted to come back. It's getting harder to keep telling them no. As a college student paying my way through college with two part-time jobs, my grandparents offered to pay off my college. Now this is a very large amount of money, they offered me around $50,000, that I would of course pay back over time. It seems like an extremely generous gesture, but my grandparents are downright evil and will hang this over my head for the rest of my life. It's hard to summarize their wickedness, but they are very manipulative and demanding. So my nephew got taken away by child services. We live in TX he lives in in. We went through three in social workers while he went through three fosters. We finally got to the background check and home visit with our local social worker. She gives us the notes and progress reports from the child psychologist. Through the reports, he went from not being potty trained, calling everyone mommy, and being considered developmentally challenged with the first two fosters to potty trained, knowing his ABCs, and calling his third foster parents mommy and daddy. These parents expressed interest in adopting him. He thought my Syl a stranger and was terrified of my Phil, even calling him monster. My wife and I both agreed the best thing for him was to stay with his fosters and not uproot him and risk destroying all the progress he made. Also getting him out of the family and a shot at a normal stable life. One of the hardest decisions we've ever made but I don't regret it one bit. I had a particularly bad stretch of financial problems after leaving a bad marriage and striking it out on my own as a single mom. Money was so scarce that at one point I was paying for food on my credit card because I had no available cash. One thing I readily sacrificed for and made sure of though, was that every Christmas there was one thing wrapped under the tree that my son had written to Santa and asked for. I always encouraged him to ask for a few things so that I had some maneuvering room. One year he proudly announced that he was asking Santa for just one thing, a trip to Disneyland. He sounded so happy when he told me this, a big smile on his face and with this feeling of discovery, because he said Mom, I know you don't have the money for us to go to Disneyland, but every year Santa always brings me what I ask for, so this year I'm asking for Disneyland. That's the night I had to tell him, no, we won't be going to Disneyland, because there is no Santa. He was devastated. I was devastated. I had to say no to him about a lot of things while he was growing up, but this was the most difficult. TLDR, no, because there is no Santa. When my son was much younger we had to hospitalize him because he had threatened to harm himself. Wasn't the first time and it was under the guidance of a psychologist. My wife and I visited on alternating days since he was only allowed one visitor per day. Each time he would beg me to take him home. If I loved him I would get him out of there. Had to say no each time. Cried my eyes out each night. He's all good now and one heck of a kid. Going to my dream school. RISD is really hard to get into, one of the best art schools in the US, and I was so psyched I got accepted. But I couldn't exactly afford to be $220,000 in debt when I graduated with a graphic design degree. Ugh. I had to tell my marching band director in high school no when he asked if I was actually going to our every other year parade at Disney World. My family always struggled growing up but we couldn't afford it. 
The part that made it especially hard on me is that I already promised him that I could go because an aunt of mine told me she would pay my way. I was a freshman in high school and felt horrible about it. I felt like I lied to this man, who was a fantastic director. The room and flight had deposits put down already so the program lost money on me. They had to adjust the marching plans to cover the hole I created. All of my friends were going and teased me about not going. I felt like the scum of the school and blamed my aunt who never sent the money. Until she called and asked how the trip went. She had sent a check to me. My mom checked the mail, opened the letter to me, and then cashed the check and hid the letter. We were always broke and she said she used it for groceries but I've never believed that. Her two carton a week cigarette addiction and my dad's roll a week snuff addiction never suffered, but money sent specifically for me for the one fun trip I had an opportunity for certainly did. I still resent her to this day for that. <laughs> Eleven years ago, when I was 17, in Chicago for a concert with my older sister. We were hanging out in the mall before the show and some older guy approaches me and says, you like video games, huh? I was wearing a Zelda t-shirt. Apparently he owned a game software company developing a game targeted at girls, and he wanted some testers. I lived in MN at the time, so I couldn't participate. But being paid to play games. Would have been magical. Also, before anyone suggests anything, he gave me a business card and looked him up online. He was legit. <laughs> Telling the woman, I love more than anyone else in existence, three times. We were 18 and about to go to college. We had always lived about an hour from each other and it was finally an opportunity for us to try a relationship. Unfortunately, I had decided to go somewhere else far away because I knew it would be better for me in the long run. She begged me to go to school with her and through swollen, tear-filled eyes, I told her I couldn't do it. Fast forward four years later, she's engaged to be married. I was home visiting from school and we agreed to go out for some drinks. She does a fine job of getting me throughly drunk and back to her apartment. She lays a, do you think we'd be the ones engaged if you had gone to school with me? To which I reply, I really have no idea. She then tells me it's our last opportunity to be together as she begins kissing up and down my neck. See. We had never slept together, and she figured now, just months before her wedding, would be the best time to tread on that territory. Once again, through a cloudy mind and raging desires, I told her no and left her room. Fast forward an additional four years, she's married with a son living across the country. We hadn't talked much since she tried to sleep with me, but was going to be in town. At this point, I think we both wanted to reconcile after everything we had been through and the friendship was too important to lose. We agreed to meet for dinner and drinks. After a bit of bar hopping, she decides to drop on me that she thinks about me every night and is still in love with me. Which led to eventually telling me that if I gave the word, she'd leave her husband to be with me. I could never be responsible for breaking up a family and after a year of no's finally ended communications with her. To this day I can still think about her and feel my heart beat in my throat. This is gonna be kind of depressing but... Are you okay? I was very depressed and suicidal, and I instinctively try to cover such things up. It took a lot to be able to say no, I'm not. My daughter's friends were all going to Hershey Park last summer, and she thought it was just this most wondrous, magical place and that nothing would make her happier than to go to Hershey Park. But I'm a single mom and don't have a lot of extra money, and I just couldn't afford it, and I had to tell her no. She looked like I had broken her heart when I told her I couldn't take her. I felt like such a shit. My parents thought that it might be too expensive and that I might drive them to debt if I went to India for college, versus staying in a shitty college in Nepal, as we had no idea at the time how expensive it might be. Coming from an extremely rural area and without prior knowledge of fees. Lifestyle in the city etc, 
I really didn't have that much guidance nor information to explain my parents. I didn't have any outside help at that time, so thought I might have to rely on parents big time and that they might be quite right. I said no to my parents about going to college in Nepal, very inexpensive and affordable but for a poor, poor quality education, and went to college in India. Two MS degrees later, I am where I am, happy, and parents are happy I did it too, didn't drive them to debt, so many people helped me along the way, thank you all, and this world turned out to be an amazing place. Those of you who debate about going to college for financial hardship, if there is a will, there is a way. Sorry dad and mom, but I had to say no to you at the time, which is probably the only time I said that to you. An emotionally vulnerable young woman who was all over me, making a bad decision by doing so. Teenaged me was pretty much saturated in hormones, but I bit down, told her she was pretty but no. Left the party and kicked myself all the way home. Sex. She was very very drunk, and I was tipsy. I'd wanted to fuck her for years but instead I went with my gut, said no, got her to her place safe and went home. Later she told me that her ex showed up that night, they did it, then got into a brawl with cops called. He didn't want her back, just sex. Put me down for number two up there, a girl I had been messing around with and for a while had my head all messed up over her, called me one night to tell me her girlfriend who had a crush on me was hanging out and they wanted me to come over to fuck them both. I had at this point gone on a few dates with my current girlfriend and I felt like she might turn out to be something special so I turned down a crazy hot threesome. Been with my girl for five years now and never regretted it. Friend of mine asked to join him in Vegas for his birthday weekend. He already had a corner suite at Planet Hollywood paid for, he had a connect, and he even told me he had a voucher for an airline so my flight would be free, a family member works for the airline. My grandmother was on her deathbed and we were expecting her to go any day at that point, so I turned my friend down. I'd like to think that if I had told my grandmother about the offer, she would have probably called me a pussy and told me to go. Found out after the trip that they actually had a once-in-a-lifetime trip. They partied with Holly Madison and the birthday boy threw up on her leg, they had similar stories and partied hard. A threesome with a girl I really loved and her friend. I had done it before with other girlfriends. I have had threesomes with girlfriends before and every time it ended up ending the relationship. Not necessarily that day or the next, but many women have a really hard time seeing their boyfriend's penis inside another woman. They were both drunk as hell and I was only slightly buzzed. I wouldn't take advantage of that situation. Two reasons to not do it, but it was extremely hard to not do it. After a string of shitty relationships, I made a promise to myself to not get involved with a woman for at least six months. Two months later, in the pub with some friends, and a very attractive woman starts coming on to me in a big way. I had to say no, to my promise to myself. I have the girl of my dreams naked in her own apartment. We're passing around a bottle, getting sloshed. We're working our way up to fuck for hours. It gets to that point and I have no condom, she has no condom. She has no condom in her own place. I said no to kids and STDs. Not that she had either, but you never know. I'm a man not a penis. When I run into a homeless person and they ask for change slash money and I literally have nothing left and I say sorry no, I don't because I just stuffed my face with a nice meal and bought myself nice clothes. Then you just see them walk away silently hopelessly and you watch from a distance, ahh, it breaks my heart. I can go hours just thinking about it. I'm sure this will get buried. Last year my mom was in the hospital with cancer. Split up staying with her into shifts. Various family of her husband on first, my brother on second, and I was third. Now she was basically heavily medicated and slept all the time. 
except she managed to be aware and awake in the middle of the night. She was a nurse and I had started going to school for becoming a doctor. One night she was having a rough night and I was trying to comfort her. She looks at and says to me I'm scared, are you? Now at this point we knew how bad it was so I just looked at her and said. No, when you get better we will go shopping for your birthday as planned. She was very very unselfish but liked fashion, an interest we shared, so I took her to the Mag Mile or high-end outlets around Chicago and bought her nice clothes for birthday and Christmas. A few days later hospice was arranged and a few weeks later she was gone. Of course we kept up the shift thing once she was moved home and passed while it was just me there, which we all knew she'd go with me there just because I was there from the beginning and we had a strong bond. I was scared shitless but couldn't for one second show fear or emotion except strength. I had lost my dad two years prior and didn't want to lose my mom at 26 years old and have no parents left before I hit 27. But looking her dead in the eye and telling her no I wasn't scared was almost impossible. Sorry for wall of text but thanks if you read this through. And college my roommates and I used to hang out at a bar a lot because there was a very hot waitress. At first I definitely thought she was always nice to us because she was just after tips, and she certainly got good ones, but after a while she started hanging out with us outside of the bar and coming over to our house to drink and smoke and whatnot, so it turned out she actually did enjoy our company. I was dating the girl who would eventually become my wife, so I never tried to do anything with her, although I flirted here and there. Fast forward to one night where my roommates and I are hanging out at a different bar, and she walks in with all of her friends. I go over and greet her and we talk for about half an hour or so then she goes back to her friends, later in the night she finds me and is clearly a little tipsy. She puts her arm around me and pulls me to the side. Do you love your girlfriend? That's a dangerous question. So I play it carefully. Yes. Okay, but are you in love with her? Yes. Never mind then. Now at this point my interest is peaked so I can't just leave it there, so I bring her back and tell her to say whatever she had on her mind. She tells me that she has some old high school friends in town and they were all headed back to her house to hang out and drink some more. She points over to the table they are at and there are just like four or five extremely hot girls sitting there. She tells me she wanted me to come. Now I don't, for one minute, believe that she was inviting me back for some kind of fantasy orgy or anything, but I certainly think she was interested and wanted me alone that night. She was incredibly hot and it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do to say no. I told my roommate about it and he kept ensuring me that he would never tell my girlfriend and he'd do whatever to cover for me, but I'm just not that kind of guy I suppose, but it would have been a hell of a night. Three summers ago I had just graduated high school and my best friend was having a party. Usually I would only go to parties if my girlfriend came with me. We were all set to go but the day before the party she started to feel really sick. She told me that she probably wouldn't be able to go tomorrow. She told me to go though, seeing as it was my best friend's party. So I decided to go, I grabbed a case of Molson Canadian from the liquor store and headed over to my friend's place. This party was a wild one. Everyone was wasted by the time I got there and it was only 10 p.m. when I showed up. People were laying on his kitchen countertop doing body shots off each other. Girls were making out, it was basically a single man's paradise. As the night progressed I began talking to this girl from my English class, we never really talked during high school but I always saw her around. The conversation was really interesting we were talking about what we were going to do after high school, we talked about our love of hockey and somehow the conversation got around to talking about sexual experiences. At this point the party was so loud that she asked me if I wanted to go somewhere quiet to keep talking. Being the idiot that I am, I agreed. We head to my friend's room and we continue our conversation about our sexual experiences. She told me that she had always wanted to give a guy a blowjob with another girl. 
I clearly wasn't picking up that this was a hint and I didn't know how to reply. I tried to change the subject back to hockey. We talked about that for a bit until she just straight up asked me a question that I will never forget. She asked me if she should text her friend to come in the room with us so that they could both blow me at the same time. I was really tempted to say yes but I just thought about my girlfriend and I politely declined. I reminded her that I had a girlfriend, left the room, said goodbye to my best friend and went home. <coughs> Saying no to my drunken dumb ass brother. Just got off the phone with him again. I am so sick of dealing with him. Alcoholics suck. It's a disease go to the DR. I can't help him. I have tried. I gave him a job doing some painting for my business. This was right before Christmas years ago. I suggested getting his three kids some presents. I was hoping it might make him get out of his own head. Instead he went on a bender and took a hammer to the toilet in the Section 8 housing. He got kicked out and then cried about how life was so unfair. Dumbass your life is shit. Quit blaming your parents who died 20 years ago. He is 51. You don't get to blame your parents after the age of 30. <coughs> this will be buried, but here goes. When I was 16 I was walking to a friend's home a little past midnight. It was coldish out, 40-45F. I speed up to catch up, figure I could have a walking buddy, I'm in Canada, it's in the suburbs. Catch up to her, she's crying. She's 2830, her boyfriend dumped her at the club they were at, class act. She was walking 7 to 8 miles to home, very drunk. I bring her in a convenience store, buy her a coffee, she has no cash on her. We chat and I offer to grab a cab to drive the two to three remaining miles. We get in, get to her place. She asks if I want to go up. I said no. Didn't feel right abusing the situation, sorrow for being dumped, drunk. I left her my number if she wanted to talk on the following day. She never called. And that's the story of how I didn't lose my virginity at 16. <coughs> this marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.